four two two. Okay, great. Now we're gonna use a piece of software called Shurkutsala. Really cheesy name. Right? All right, so Shurkutsala, and I'm gonna help you from this. So if you want to email this image that you want to create a digital from, or if you know AI, you can just generate this file on your own. Or you know Rhino, you could do it in Rhino, okay? <laughs> You're like, not yet, right? Okay, so Shurkat's a lot has two functions that we can use. One, we can just import the AI file, right? So if you already know an illustrator, draw up something, and we'll, we'll just go import directly, okay? Now, this says new project, we'll say, okay, actually I wanna make this uh, with, uh, we're gonna make it, and I'll do this part for you. I'm gonna cut the vinyl for you, okay? But I want you to know how it works, so that in the future, when you do a project, I can have you do it. So our width, we're at about 12 inches there, and we'll do something about 12 inches. That direction will say, okay. Okay, so this is our map size, all right? So now our options are either import, right? So we can import an SVG, or an AI file, and it will automatically just be ready to cut, okay? We're gonna, in our case, it's a JPEG, so we have to click trace. Make sure you write this down, okay? So trace, we're gonna trace the image. Yes, sir, Oliver. Are we do it with it in Illustrator? What's that? So we do this, we get the image on, like, online, and then we take the Illustrator. Yeah, or, or if you want to create an original artwork and you want to start an Illustrator, you can do that as well. Absolutely. So you can either download uh, a vector and convert it, you know, through, if, you got to be careful with uh, live trace, right? It always real kind of jagged. But yeah, you can either do that. You could, um, this will trace it though for us a little cleaner than live trace, what we're doing right now. But if you already have an Illustrator or SVG, you're good to go, ready to cut. You don't have to do this step right now that I'm doing. Okay. So I'm gonna say choose image, and you'll see that it has this, there's my 422, right? There's my zombie hand, and I'm gonna say open. Now this has default settings in here, and we can we can play with these settings, but anything that's red, it's traced it for it. And it looks pretty darn good. Like, it's not real jagged, at least it doesn't look like it. Let's zoom in. That's pretty clean, right? So, I think we're good. So I'm just gonna hit okay. And it's gonna trace it, and now that's our image. Now that's kinda big, right? This is huge, it's not gonna fit. So we have to scale this down so it'll fit on a two by two. And this is gonna be kinda detailed, but let's try it, okay? And Deb, you're gonna learn how to use this vinyl cutter in your Rhino class as well. So that's gonna be one of our first things to do with the design to be true. Okay, so we got it in a two by two square scale, so it's ready to cut. So we're gonna load up our vinyl cutter. We have some vinyl. So the vinyl, right, this is sticky material. We're gonna load this in. Now there's these little levers on the back side. They're kind of like presser feet on a sewing machine. So you saw me put those up so I can run this in underneath my cutting head. And I can set this up so the rollers are gripping this. And move that over just a little bit. And then I put my presser feet down gently. Okay, we don't want to damage it, those are plastic. We're gonna turn on our machine and it's gonna home itself, right? Now there's a little cutting blade in here. This blade can get um, gummed up with stuff, so every once in a while I have to clean it out. I'm not gonna go through all this like I will in my Rhino class. I'm gonna go through the whole, like how to set up the machine and everything. I'm gonna be starting to do it, but later on I'll have you do it, okay? All right, now what I normally do first is I do test. I run, there's a button that says test. And it cuts a little star, and we can make sure that we've got our pressure set right. Okay? 
And so then I can go to offline and I can move my vinyl out and I can see if my star is going to release. So the idea is this should be easy to pull up and it's not very easy, is it? Yeah, so it's not pulling up very nicely. So guess what? That means our pressure's not set right on our cutting blade. So we're going to go back, and this time I'm going to move it a little farther up, and then we're going to hit reset. Now, we can adjust the pressure of the cut head when we go when we go to the up and down arrows here. When it's not in the offline mode, we can increase our pressure. Okay, so I'm going to increase it to 90 millimeters. Okay, um, or two. Let's see. Let's go, let's go uh, 240 on our cut pressure. Our cut speed will slow down, okay? So now let's hit uh, test again. Okay, and then we can hit offline. We can move it out. And so the idea would be that we start to peel this and it releases easily. You can see it's still not quite, it's okay, but it's kind of tearing the vinyl, see that? So again, we've got to go back and adjust our pressure again. So I'm going to beat this back, and this one I'm going to go over here and set a new origin. And then we're going to do, uh, let's see, let's do our, we are 240, let's go 270. Now let's try test. Right, and then we'll do offline and we'll move this out. And then we'll see if this releases. Cleaner. Poke that through. Now we're clean. Let me adjust my pressure here. You can also adjust the pressure here, but I usually don't do that. But I have a feeling that this is out of adjustment just a little bit. Let's try that. You want that just barely to kind of be sticking. So, I know this seems kind of like, why are we going to do this? Once we get it set, we will, we will be in good, you know, good shape to do a lock. We, can, we don't have to do this every single time, right? And let's try test again. Okay, now I think we're too, we're too much, okay? So I'll show that to you. So let's do uh, offline. It's cutting, but look what it's doing, it's cutting through. So we've got to adjust our pressure, so let's go back. So now because I adjusted that head, we got to lighten up our pressure. So let's do um, origin, and then cut pressure will reduce.
That's what we want. So again, we shouldn't have to mess with it. Now, I say that, but what happens inevitably is when some people go to move, they think they're gonna jog this, they start hitting these buttons. And when they do that, they're changing the cut pressure. So right now I'm sitting at 200 on my cut pressure. But I cannot hit these buttons unless I'm in offline mode. Then I can jog it, okay, everybody got that? All right, so we're ready to go. Machine has been reset, okay? Reset it one more time, make sure. And now we can take this, and I'm gonna go ahead and copy this and make another one. And we're gonna head, let me move that one over just a little bit. Come on. Crop it on our two by two. Okay, and then once we have it, we're gonna hit cut. So do cutter, and we're gonna choose the cutter we're using, which is the MH model. And we're gonna say, you can see down here where our images are, and we say cut. Alright, it's gonna sound like a video game. Okay. So your third thing on your list is to find an image that we can cut vinyl. Now, if it's too detailed, it's going to be a pain because we have to do this thing called weeding. We're going to weed the design. Okay? And I like to weed, so I don't mind a little detail. Like, it's fun. Like, there's something therapeutic. Some of you will hate it. So you probably want to go with a more simple design. But I also want you to realize this can do some pretty cool detailed stuff too. And it's fast, and it's not that expensive, right? Like, I, you know, like that paper is kind of pricey. You know, I buy it for you, but if you're doing something where you're doing something huge, vinyl's the way to go because we've got bigger vinyl cutters too here in the building and at my house. So if you needed big images, so I have students that use a vinyl cutter a lot. A lot of painters use it for stenciling, you know, big canvases too. So it's like there's multiple uses. It looks like a glorified sticker machine, right? For making stickers, but like it can be used in all sorts of applications. There's an ink pen that goes in here, and we can actually do like digital drawings as well, like on large pieces of paper, right? That, because we can do almost endless length. The only thing we're limited to is width. And I'm, like I said, I've got one that's about this wide too, you know? So it's a very useful tool. sacrificial boards, make sure you use those boards, these mats, and okay? don't cut on your table, all right? fun to watch. All right, and then we can pull our design out. garden? Yes? You ever weed? All the time, right? <coughs> Dead of summer and weed the garden, right? Okay. 
this I like. Okay, so I usually just kind of get my image roughly to the size it needs to be. It doesn't have to be exact at this point. All right, so now I'm going to use an exacto, and we have to make a decision here on what is negative and what is positive. Okay, you can do it however you want. It's up to you. Um, maybe I'll just try it different ways on both of these. So let's. I'm going to try to peel back. Let's see how this goes. Let me try peeling just the outline since it's thin. So I usually just kind of get under this with my X-Acto. You see how it wants to lift? Now if the vinyl sticks to itself, it's a real pain to get off. Look at that. See how that's coming out? That's coming out really clean, actually. So we got our pressure set really well. Yeah, right. 